Spring football is starting in a few days and it's time to see where things stand before the action begins. Which returning starters are prepared to take that next step? And who can lock down those open spots on the depth chart? Eric Nalin, owner of Inside Texas, is here to catch us up to speed with the squad before spring kicks off. Inside Texas is the best place to stay up to date with all the latest reports coming out of practice. Subscribe to InsideTexas.com today. Link in the description. So what do we need to know before the players put on the pads and compete for that starting spot? Without further ado, let's get into it. What's up, Eric? And we're going to cover spring ball all throughout the month, but let's set the scene so the fans can know what to look for. Let's start with the quarterback room. How are things progressing behind the scenes with the QBs? Yeah, there's a lot of excitement about quarterback, not just viewers at the top, but there's a lot of excitement about Malik Murphy and, and Arch Manning, of course. You know, they still got Charles Wright. So this is the healthiest uh, quarterback room that we've seen at Texas in a long time. That assumes, of course, that yours does make the jump that, that many, including those in the offices in, at Texas, expect. You know, that's kind of, that's the biggest question of the entire offseason, as far as I'm concerned, is, is how much of an improvement does he make? He's showing all the signs, you know. I, I mean, he's showing more signs than you can expect to see. And, it, uh, you know, some of those are visual. You know, obviously, he's transformed his body considerably since uh December December. We heard he was turning the corner for bowl practices, and that seems to have, uh, have borne out. You can't really make a physical transformation without making some sort of mental transformation, but we don't know how much that's going to translate to the field. But expectations are pretty high for him right now. Of course, there's Arch Manning there, and and I asked if uh, some of the some of yours' motivation stems from from Arch, and he goes, he knows Arch is there. He, the source goes, everybody knows Arch is there. There is a little bit of a competition aspect there. But Malik Murphy was pretty effective in scout team last season. Steve Sarkeesian will probably tell people that, that he's as talented as anybody they have. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. So we know how good the room can be. I don't. I think it's going to play out pretty obviously that yours is going to start. But there might be competition for a second string. That'll be interesting to see. And then at running back, we've been spoiled with Bijan and Roshan. And now there's an opportunity for a competition. Where are we at with the running backs as winter conditioning ends? The running back room has more questions about it than quarterback and in many other positions on the team. You know, there's a lot of experience returning, but they're, they're losing two of their most talented players and, and two of their best leaders in, in B. John Robinson and Rashawn Johnson. So that opens the door wide open. But when that door opens up, that, that usually sparks competition. Everybody knows that there's carries available. And Jonathan Brooks is very excited about the opportunity to come in and earn that number one job. But those guys know even if they aren't the number one, they're going to get carries. You know, hell, even B. John Robinson had to share carries with, with Rashawn Johnson. So they know that 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 also keeps them motivated to keep working. You know, if you don't win the job outright, there's still going to be carries available. I'll be interested to see how they retool the offense with the loss of Bijan and, and, and Rashawn. I don't think they're going to uh, make it so run centric. And that will open up the door for more of these versatile guys. That, that The guys that can pass catch and show that ability are going to have a, have an advantage. So, you know, I could see it. I could see it turning out to be a, a platoon. Keelan Robinson getting some third down looks and, and screens and stuff like that. Jaden Blue can do some of those things. Saving Red, I'm excited to hear about him. He can add some versatility in two back sets if they want to go that direction. He's got some dog in him like Rashawn did. But I think Brooks and uh, Baxter are the ones that everybody's excited about. And I think they're going to get the most carries. You know, probably Brooks number one next year and, the, and Baxter number two with Baxter starting to even out over the second half of the season. The way that they can uh, block on the edges kind of sets up well for Brooks too because he's a really good at bouncing outside and getting upfield. And then talking about retooling the offense after losing our running backs, do we end up seeing an emphasis on three receiver sets, leaning more on the wide receiver room? Yeah, the big question at wide receiver is going to be personnel packages. You know, and that's a that's a significant question. It's it's one of the bigger stories, you know, outside of Quinn Ewers uh, that, that we'll be paying attention to on offense. Uh, are you going to take a tight end off the field and bring on another wide receiver? On paper, they have really good wide receivers. They have talented wide receivers. And what I like about 11 personnel is it, it does put guys in their best fit. You know, A.D. Mitchell's a boundary receiver. Jordan Whittington's a slot receiver. And, and Xavier Worthy's probably a field receiver before he's anything else. So he could probably play slot in a more vertical role. I think you could see more RPOs because of it to Jordan Whittington. Getting the ball to him quick with the, with a little bit of space to operate in or, or a tackle to break, I think will really highlight his game. We still have not seen the best of Jordan Winnington, which is exciting because we saw him make plays last season. But I do expect to see more 11 personnel, but I'm not sure how much. Of course, that ties into tight end because one comes off the field. But you've got Jatavian Sanders, who is not just a receiving tight end. He can kind of do it all. So you still have versatility, even though you're in 11 personnel that you might, might have had in 12 personnel as well. What's the word on the freshman receivers that enrolled early? Are they going to get some quality reps? 
Yeah, the, the two incoming guys are both going to play a lot. Jonte Cook is going to get a lot of looks, and so is DeAndre Moore. Cook could play slaughter outside. They both came in rather mature for, or, you know, at least ready for the competition. Played a lot of football. They've made a lot of plays at the highest levels. They're ready to play. They've been working a lot with the quarterbacks. I think with, you know, Brennan Thompson running track and, and Sabian Red moving to, to running back, it sure opens up a lot of opportunity for those guys. But I think uh, DeAndre Moore is probably best suited to slot receiver. He's got a physical, physical element to his game that I think translates well there. And I expect to see him play a lot next season. If we do end up in one tight end sets often, Jatavion Sanders would still be on the field. So do you expect him to be more of a focus in the pass game? I'm curious to see how Sanders' role uh, expands and evolves over time. There is a bit of a trade-off there. Sark is going towards the tight end. He's not going somewhere else. And we know how he likes to go over the top and down the field. Now, I think there's ways to get Jatavia and Sanders open vertically, but Sark might see it a little bit differently. He has his preferences. So if he's going to Sanders, it means he's not going somewhere else, but he's fully capable of of 70 or 80 receptions, I'm pretty sure. But there are going to be some trade-offs that that Sark is probably going to be working through this spring and and maybe even in August. Cool, cool. And then on offensive line, we're returning both our right and left tackle. So the battles are taking place in the interior. What's the latest reports on how the line is looking? Texas is in a good spot on the offensive line. They're answering the tough questions first. The first you want to you want to build from the outside in. They've got their tackles in place. They've got an experienced center. Even if you might not be the, the ideal fit, you know, they might want a little more size and power there. He's still smart and a great leader in Jake Majors. So, and then at guards, you know, there's questions there, but they have a lot of potential answers. You know, something's going to shake out. They're going to be surprise players or maybe not surprise players, but guys that actually start to look like the the prospects they were. One thing to be a highly rated prospect, now you have to become a good football player. And, you know, that's where spring football is for. So a guy like DJ Campbell might start showing more signs of five-star ability. We saw it at times last season, but he's got to become a lot more consistent. Hayden Connor, if he's stronger at the point of attack, I think that he's going to be tough to to, to unseat. And Neto Umi Ozulu, Malik Agbo, those guys work very hard. If you see any clips of those guys working out, like they look a lot different than when they first arrived. They're all working hard. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to shake out, but they've got a lot of potential players there, you know, and, and that doesn't even count Cole Hudson, who's, who's going to miss with his shoulder injury. So spring practice starts March 6th and doesn't end until April 15th. That means there's going to be a lot of time for the coaches to sit there thinking about what they should do, what they, how they could tinker and maybe make some, uh, some changes. Maybe, you know, maybe they, they try Christian Jones at guard. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm, you know, I'm not even predicting it. I'm saying it is a possibility. He's a very good run blocker. He's not going to get pushed around down there. You know, then that would open the door to get Cam, uh, Cam Williams out there at right tackle. It's just, you know, it's it's very similar to the secondary. You're looking for your five best, and then you're going to make the five best work. Christian Jones wasn't expected to come back, and we know that they were they were still confident in what Cam Williams can do. If something happened to Kelvin Banks, God forbid, I think Christian Jones would be the first left tackle, pretty obviously, and then Cam Williams would just slide into right tackle. But Cam's working hard. He's giant and he's talented. If he's one of the five best, then that might push Christian Jones down a guard. And, you know, that wouldn't be a bad thing for for Jones either because that, that would demonstrate versatility to the NFL. All right, that was good stuff on offense. Looking at interior defensive line, we lost two starters to the NFL, but we have great options there to replace that production. How are the big guys doing? And of course, I need the annual how is Alfred Collins looking update. Defensive line, the number one thing I'm thinking about is is Alfred Collins treating it like a contract year. He could technically play two more, but really should be his final season in college. He's too talented to stick around and, and play all these all these seasons. Really, he's a three year talent. If, uh, if he brings it this season, you know, I don't think there's going to be much concern about losing uh, Keandre Coburn and Moro Ojimo, even though those guys provided a, a, a lot of consistency this past season. Devondre Sweat, I think, is is showing all the signs of somebody that's going to have a very very strong season. Byron Murphy, we know he's a quality player. So they do have a good little rotation there. They do need some younger guys to emerge, and, and you know they'd, they'd benefit greatly if Vernon Broughton would step up. But if Alfred Collins plays to 90% of his talent level, then that position is going to be really good. And then at edge, we have our strong side Jack returning, but how is it going trying to find that dominant pass rusher? Edge to me is a lot like interior offensive line where there are some questions, but there's also plenty of potential answers. You know, there's talent there. Guys that are going to take a, a big step in their second season. That's normally when players make their biggest jump. My sources don't know who's going to break out <laughs> definitively, but they know somebody's going to break out. Luckily, they've got Barrett Sorrell that are setting a, setting a good floor at a very tough position at Jack outside linebacker. Buck, I really think that Finkley uh, sets a very high uh, floor as far as a run stopper. You know, I think he's got a, a decent amount of quickness and I think he can, you know, power his way into into some pass rush. But they really need that guy that's just puts the uh, offensive lineman on skates and overthinking every one of his moves. They need that guy. And Dre Bledsoe ha- has that ability at Jack and Jamon Tapp has it over there at Buck as well. And then, you know, Ethan Burke, let's not let's not forget about Ethan Burke. You know, he, he started he played some last season. He's an ideal candidate to break out and become a quality player in year two. We need somebody to get after the quarterback. And that linebacker, we're replacing Overshone at Will. And this is the most interesting battle taking place. So what's the word there? 
Yeah, Will Linebacker is probably going to be the single most intriguing position battle of the entire camp. It's wide open. You got Maurice Blackwell coming back. David Bend is coming back. But I think the you know most of the excitement is around Anthony Hill and Leona LaFau. I think people are starting to, to hip to the fact that Leona's got a chance. I think Leona's probably the most likely person to replace Jalen Ford in 2024. If that's accurate, then that means he's going to have a decent chance to, to play Will as a freshman. But they might just rotate it, and and I, that one might not be settled until September sometime. You know, we got a lot of guys guys battling it out. Maurice Blackwell is still a little bit on the small side for it. Anthony Hill is a freak athlete. We wrote about him last week, about the people in the strength and conditioning program are raving about him. Leona's gaining weight, smart, very good in pass coverage, but that that position doesn't necessarily ask for it. It's really it, that position really sets up well for a seek and destroy play that Anthony Hill can bring to the table. Everybody's excited about him, but he's got to go out and win it. And it's not going to be an easy competition. You got Leona LaFowle that's going to is a very strong uh, competitor. He's an alpha. Maurice Blackwell just got a taste of playing time this last season. He started to play well. Obviously, he's going to be hungry. And, and David Bennett's his final year. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. 100%. And then we have the battle for the field corner spot. How is that shaping up with the arrival of transfer Gavin Holmes? Well, everybody's excited to see Gavin Holmes because he's athletic. It shows up in the agility drills, you know, just the way he can move and float around. It's a pretty good replacement for how Deshaun Jameson moved around the field. He might not be quite as explosive as Deshaun, but he's a very good athlete. Yeah, people are excited to see how he, how he looks. That field corner is going to be a battle for him. Everybody knows Ryan Watts has boundary locked up. I'm, I'm partially to blame for this, too. Everybody talks about Terrence Brooks and Gavin Holmes, but I don't think people should sleep on Austin Jordan either. Uh, we could see a scenario where Brooks, Brooks goes to boundary and he and Watts have some sort of timeshare that, that appeals to everybody, or at least works for him. And then we see something similar with Gavin Holmes and Austin Jordan. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. They do have some good depth. I think four guys are capable of being Big 12 starters. Gavin Holmes is probably the most likely to win that field corner battle. He's got experience. He's got more experience than Terrence. Um, I think he profiles a little better to that specific uh, corner position. I, I do think Brooks is probably the, the heir apparent to uh, Watts in 2024. But interesting spring at that position, too. There's not a whole lot of like really intriguing competition uh, or battles, but Will and, and obviously Field Corner are two of them. Safety is looking good with Thompson returning and then bringing in Jalen Catalan. What's that room looking like as a whole, though, pre-spring ball? Yeah, Jaron Thompson uh, continues the trend of them being strong up the middle. You know, they've got good D tackles. They've got Jalen Ford right there, and then and then a, a really great leader in Jaron Thompson. Now he's, you know, at this point, he's quite experienced. He's going to help Jalen Catalan transition into the Texas playbook, but I don't think that's going to be too difficult. Catalan's experienced, attacks it, very mature player. I think everybody expects him to win the job as long as he's healthy. The big question at the position is just developing depth. Jaron got dinged up last year. Anthony Cook got dinged up last year. The more physical these guys play and play downhill, you know, the more you have to develop depth uh, so guys can come in and do the same if you go out with the dinger. Depth is what I'm concerned about. Michael Taff is going to play a lot. Just he's, he's a smart kid, loves football. I don't think a lot of people know that, you know, I think everybody assumes he's a frat boy, but he, uh, he actually eschewed joining a frat so he could focus on football a little bit more. So he's not just he's not just there to be a pretty face. Keaton Crawford, maybe he makes another jump. I don't know. Clearly, he's athletic and physical enough. He's an NFL athlete. He's, he's physical to be in the NFL, but the game has to slow down for him. He thinks way too much out there. If he starts processing faster, which, you know, that's what spring ball is for, he could fight his way into some playing time. He should at least be a good special teams player, too. So there's still some young guys, too. You know, Larry Turner Gooden, quite popular behind the scenes. Uh, and then B.J. Allen. It's a big spring for B.J. Allen. I'm excited to cover the rest of spring ball with you and the Inside Texas gang. But first, please let everybody know where they can stay informed during spring camp. Well, if you don't know to find us at Inside Texas, this must be your first video with a, with us too, but hopefully not. Yeah, find us at InsideTexas.com. I think we have the most comprehensive coverage of the Texas Longhorns, football, basketball, recruiting. We're pretty on top of it. If you know, if we're not breaking this story, we've probably, we've got the background and probably had to sit on it for some reason. So there's a lot of evidence of that uh, in our writing. We, we're, we're clued in. We're very tied in or about as tied in as we can be. So give us a shot at InsideTexas.com. We're running a special right now. I think it's $29 until the start of the season. Sit tight for another week or two. We might not run another promotion that you might like even more. But just make sure to check us out. Hit the homepage. Uh, there's plenty of free content out there, too. And that's a wrap on Eric Nolene. Head over to Inside Texas and sign up today. Thanks for hanging out. Watch some more of my videos here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to support quality Texas content. As always, welcome.